Hi everybody, welcome back to Happy Little Diodes and something a little bit different today. This is a 1991 Toyota Sora that's suffering from an engine stall problem. The engine ECUs in these things are notorious for getting leaky capacitors, which is something that we always worry about with our spectrums, so we're going to take a look in and see if any of them have gone. Maybe a recap will solve the issue. We can see it is a Denso ECU. That's a fairly common name in the automotive industry. It's a typical ECU construction, a big metal case, some bracketry and a big massive connector on one end. I'm hoping we just need to remove the screws from this side and the other side. We should be able to access the board inside and see what's going on. I managed to strip one of the heads of the screws but a drill bit managed to, to remove the thing in the end. So let's take the lid off, have a look underneath. Okay, we're looking at the back of a PCB here, there's not much there for us to work on. I'm assuming that the interesting components are on the inside of the case. We've got some screws to remove to access the inside. Just having a look, there's quite a few small components, some SMD components, but generally nothing too unfamiliar from our tinkerings in the specy world. And I do know that the capacitors, which are at risk of leaking, are all electrolytic, as you would expect, so we should be able to work on this thing. There's our screws removed, the PCB is kind of stuck down, it probably just needs a bit of a pull to unstick it, there we go. And I can feel that there is something else attaching it, probably a ribbon cable. Let's take a look. Yep, yeah, there we are. Two big ribbon cables, so that's going to make it interesting to work on. What I'm going to do is flip it over, take the back off, and maybe we can access it and totally remove the board. And what do we see? We see the back of another PCB. So, that implies there are two PCBs uh, facing each other, connected by ribbon cables. Now, what I'm appearing to be confused about here is that these screws have been covered in some kind of seal, superglue or something. So, they really didn't want you to um, remove this board. Now, we're going to have to work on it within the case. Okay, back to the top side. I've put some uh, tape over here to prevent the PCB from scratching against the case too much. Um, those ribbon cables have quite a bend in them, so there's a lot of play, although I am reluctant to try and fully straighten them out. Um, I think I can work on it without doing that. Um, I have too many bad experiences with the specky keyboard ribbon cables breaking. But anyway, now we can see what we've got to work with. There's one electrolytic on the top board, I'm going to call it the top board, and eight electrolytics on the bottom board. Um, I read the values off, here we go. Um, but bear in mind, it's not enough just to look for the capacitance and the voltage rating and the temperature, although those are obviously very important. For this application, you really need to buy low ESR capacitors. I only learned this by looking on the forums, but it appears to be extremely important, so keep that in mind. Uh, you can find these, um, well I use Mouser, and I found them on Mouser, they have their own category. So you can filter by low ESR electrolytic capacitors, and then find everything you need in there. And here they are. Um, it kind of does my head in how every different thing you order comes in its own plastic bag, but I guess that's the way they have to do it. I think every single one I got was a Panasonic EEU capacitor, which was recommended in the forum, so I'm pleased with that. Now let's have a look. I've got the microscope out. I found two leaky capacitors. This is the first one. Um, I'm not sure what we're going to find under there, so we'll have to remove the capacitor and clean it up. The second one looks particularly bad. It seems to have leaked everywhere, all of the diode to the, to the right there, and it's covering these little uh, little traces on the board too. So um, we're going to clean that up and see what damage we have. Now I thought removing capacitors is absolutely bread and butter for me now after refurbishing all those speckies, but this is a double-sided multi-layer PCB and uh, it's a little bit more tricky to work with. So after trying a few things, the best way of doing it, I thought, was to strip the solder from the joints and remove the capacitor as a whole, as opposed to cutting the legs of the capacitor. And then cleaning up the area after removing the excess solder from the joints and checking continuity for every visible connection I could see. Um, unfortunately, there are no um, circuit diagrams available for this board, you'd have to reverse engineer it. So visual check and checking continuity to where all the traces appear to go will tell you if the joint has been damaged or any of the traces have been damaged in between. This is the only capacitor on the top side of the two boards, so uh, that seemed an easy one to start with. It hadn't leaked and everything looks clean. Here's the replacement capacitor. Let's pop it in. 
I was conscious to give it a touch more solder and heat because this board I think is thicker than the boards I'm used to working with. Everything seemed to go together without a problem. After trimming those legs down that first capacitor was done, let's take a look at this first leaky capacitor in the bottom right hand side of the bottom board. I've removed it now <clears throat> and I'm cleaning up all of the uh, gunk and all of the mess that was left. So here it is before cleaning, doesn't look great. And here it is after cleaning. Um, I, I did tidy up those solar joints so they don't look great in this shot, only to get a quick look at it. But luckily no traces were damaged and continuity checked out between everything that I could see it was connected to. Next up was this pair of capacitors in the top right. Those hadn't leaked, so it was quite easy to remove them, clean it up and replace them. Now what about this one? This is a 220 microfarad capacitor which has had a hard life. We're going to finally uh, put it to retirement. Let's inspect the damage. I'm a bit worried about the three traces to the right. The bottom joint I'm pretty sure has lost connection to that thick trace on the left. Here it is cleaned up. The three traces have survived. The top joint looks okay but the bottom joint has definitely lost its pad. So what I did was I scraped back the solder mask from the trace which should be joined to the pad so I could test continuity to see where it goes. And I did find it, it is a ground. You see this uh, thick bar with three joints in that I'm removing the solder from now. That's where it goes to. This is the um, negative leg um, of the capacitor connected to this ground. Also the negative leg of two other capacitors connected to this ground. So it makes sense that I need to patch up to there. I'm going to use little bits of wire like this. Because the trace on the PCB was quite beefy, um, I'm going to use two of them. I'm going to connect like this, and I'm also going to connect one to one of the other joints on that ground. I chose to solder in the patch wires while soldering in the legs of the capacitors, because I want the patch wires to really be inside the joint rather than just attached on the um, surface of the board. There we have it. I could have put a third one in, but I think two should suffice. Um, I'm going to do a quick continuity check and then continue to replace the remaining capacitors. Alright, all the capacitors have been replaced. I'm going to go over everything once more time with some alcoholic spirit, get the whole thing clean. I'm going to have one last visual inspection, do some continuity checks before sewing it up. The last thing I did was just pop some glue where I could see it would be advantageous to hold the capacitors in place or hold them to each other. And now I can remove my protective tape and we can try and start the car. The ECU sits in the driver's footwell. We just need to attach this fairly beefy loom to it and then we can try and crank the car and see what noise it makes. Oh yes, that sounds pretty nice. How's your katakana? Those red fault codes weren't engine related, thankfully. And the car did, um, did behave very nicely until it was warm and then the stalling issue came back. So it seems like the stalling issue wasn't related to this ECU. Or if it is, the recapping didn't solve it. So investigations are going to continue. Um, I'm a little bit suspectful of the fuel pump ECU. Apparently they tend to get leaky capacitors as well. If you're interested, I will post an update on how the car gets on on the Patreon blog. Alright, thank you for watching. Um, if you're interested in what's coming next, as I'm recording this, there is a Commodore PET sat next to me halfway through repair. I'm getting somewhere with that. That's going to be a great video with some really interesting logic circuit diagnosis. And I've also got two toast racks in the post for a repair and refurb, so they'll definitely make it into a video. Alright, thanks again and see you all in the next video.